Yes, it is now 9.05 local time and we will start, uh, slowly start uh, to begin on this uh, webinar. So on behalf of the project partners, uh, allow me to extend a warm welcome to the ACES end event and uh, thank you all for joining. My name is Peter Berg Anderson and I will act as, as moderator for this event. Today, we have attempted to condense a three-year project into a three-hour program for you. We'll start up uh, in a little bit. Uh, we'll start up with uh, the project manager himself, Mattia Mainelli, who will pr provide us a brief overview of the ACES project. Afterwards, we'll have a half-hour presentation by Lisa Caliaro on the charging needs for 1 million EVs. Next, uh, we will have a presentation on a study on battery degradation for VGD services. Um, this study was done by Andreas Tingvall. Andreas, unfortunately, can't join us today. Uh, instead, we have uh, Mattia and Lisa uh, presenting uh, on his behalf. Then we have a short break, after which Mattia will return to give us some perspectives on the stabilization uh, of the power system with vehicle to grid. And finally, you will hear from our partners. You will hear some key results uh, from uh, Kenta Suzuki, representing Nissan Research Center. We have Moon Slöke and uh, Masi Miliano Guerrilla from Nuvi. And finally, Hans Henrik Gibson, who represents Bonholm Energy and Supply. And uh, after this program, we'll be wrapping up in a Q&A session. So you have a chance to ask the last questions uh, that has arisen through this uh, throughout this uh, uh, morning. A few practical information before we begin. Um, you can ask questions and we encourage that you ask questions throughout by typing them in the Q&A module uh, in this Zoom webinar. You can uh, also view and upvote questions from other, um, from other parts of the audience. This will allow us to, to choose the most popular questions uh, to ask the, uh, the, the, pen, the panelists or the presenters. Uh, all questions will be answered in the last five minutes of each presentation slot and during the wrap-up session. I will gently and politely inform speakers when they start to use up the five-minute question time in the end of each presentation. Um, the slides which are not subject to confidentiality will be shared after the event and also to inform you that this event will be recorded uh, for your later consumption. Um, so with that, uh, our first speaker has more than 100 publications on EV integration and storage in the power system and is also currently managing a handful of different EV related projects. He also acts as principal investigator and project manager in this ACES project. So please welcome Associate Professor Mattia Mainelli. Thanks a lot, Peter, for the very kind and uh, polite introduction. And thanks, uh, everyone, for joining uh, this event. I guess you join uh, the event with a lot of expectation to learn uh, a lot of new findings, and I hope we will uh, meet those expectations. So before getting into the more, uh, let's say, technical presentation, I would like to give an overview on the project itself, on the ACES project. Uh, just to summarize in a couple of words, the key objectives, we want to investigate, uh, we wanted to investigate technical economy system benefit on a large scale integration of electrical vehicle. We took the island of Bornholm, the Danish island of Bornholm as a test case but as a matter of fact, uh, we try to replicate as far as possible the learning so that it could be applied also in other uh, contexts. We had uh, quite a number of uh, different simulation activities to uh, spanning from uh, grid impact and uh, battery degradation and so forth. And then we complemented the simulation activities with uh, measurement and uh, demonstration in order to prove that uh, all our ideas could be actually verified. First of all, uh, why doing a research project on electric vehicles? I would say, uh, let's say most of us probably are very knowledgeable on the area, but probably it's to stress a need and uh, an opportunity. So a need because uh, we need to uh, make sure that there is enough room to host all the charging. And just to give you a number in Denmark, uh, daily electricity consumption is around 93 gigawatt hour of energy. And uh, having one million EVs, that's a little bit and a half, uh, of the total vehicles would add 10% of the energy. 
And as we will see throughout the slides, this will translate also in a higher number in terms of power. And we need to make sure that the grid can uh, handle that, definitely. On the other hand, uh, we also know that the electric vehicle is basically a storage. And just to make a quick calculation, 1 million vehicles, 60 kilowatt hour each, it's an equivalent storage capacity of 60 gigawatt hour of energy, which could be used a lot to increase uh, uh, hosting capacity and increase uh, renewable wind, solar, and so forth. So let's say it's for these two reasons that we are uh, doing quite a number of uh, research projects in terms of uh, uh, EVs. So the most relevant questions that we ask ourselves throughout the, the, the simulation, throughout the project was, um, can we use uh, a fairly large set of EVs to contribute to balance the power system without creating local grid issues? How many people will charge all together when coming back home in the evening? And how do specific driving and EV energy capacity affect the control method when providing ancillary services? And how much, that's quite important, does battery degradation affect the service profitability? Before moving forward, I would like to mention that that's definitely not the first research project that we have on electric vehicles. Actually, here at DTU, we come from a rather uh, long and successful tradition of uh, research projects. Uh, and you just see on the slide here the most uh, uh, the largest that we had in the in the past few years and the ACES project is, is just the uh, last in line. I need to acknowledge that uh, throughout these three years of uh, project we had uh, uh, many people, many colleagues and friends actually supporting the research activities, some uh, more at the beginning of the research project, others joining towards the end, but definitely that's not uh, one or a handful uh, uh, let's say, person uh, effort. Uh, I, of course, let's say it was not just uh, the university, so it was not just us, but it was also our three very important uh, uh, industrial partners. Nissan, who actually has been uh, the one, uh, uh, let's say, having the first discussion, so to set up this uh, ACES project. So I, I definitely extend my personal uh, uh, thank to them. Uh, and of course, they also brought into the project their extensive knowledge on uh, EV, uh, let's say on battery degradation and also on driving behavior being one of the first, if not the first large uh, car manufacturer entering the EV world. Our good uh, friends and colleagues from uh, the utility of Bornholm who, uh, let's say, contributed a lot with their knowledge on, uh, on the island and their knowledge on the electrical grid and made it possible for us to play, let's say, with the island of Bornholm for uh, uh, research purposes. And definitely also the V2G service provider Anuvi, who uh, contributed a lot with their uh, knowledge on uh, bidirectional operation of electrical vehicles and also with uh, the usage of the hardware that we used for uh, uh, the demonstration activities. So thanks a lot, definitely, to all of them. Uh, moving to uh, key numbers uh, and uh, key results uh, in, the, in the project. So as I said, uh, this was a three and a half year project, more than 30 people involved, definitely not all of them full time, of course. Uh, we have an overall budget of 1.4 million euro, of which more than a half was supported through public funding via the UDP, so the Danish Agency for Development of New Energy Technologies. We published or are about to publish, uh, I would say, an uh, astonishing number of uh, publication on uh, peer reviewed conferences and uh, journal papers. And I am also very proud that uh, we managed to get a lot of publication in collaboration with uh, other ongoing Danish and uh, European uh, projects. We also published a frequency data set that we use for our own investigation so that everyone else can uh, recreate uh, their own analysis based on the same uh, data that we used. Three PhD students uh, contributed to the activities uh, in, to a large extent, of course, in this uh, project. I have to acknowledge that uh, one uh, PhD was co-funded by a Nordic Five Tech Scholarship, so that's DTU-based funding, and uh, one has been co-funded by the European projects CAR and uh, Insule. And definitely there has been also 10 master uh, students that with their thesis project contributed largely to the activities, to the research activities. Key numbers of the demonstration. So as I said, uh, we didn't just do simulation, we had also quite an extensive number of uh, demonstration activities. We could take advantage of the 20 bidirectional uh, chargers that are used on a commercial basis by Nuvi to provide uh, V2G uh, services. We could use at the same time, of course, also the 20 vehicles that are uh, 
attached to those charger and I have to acknowledge the uh, let's say kind contribution of the municipality in Bornholm that actually made it possible for us to use those vehicles for measurement test and so forth one uh, unidirectional charger that uh, we built uh, in house and uh, we installed in uh, one place and I will come back to that uh, later and also the vehicles and the chargers that were a part uh, of the activities of the Parker project actually uh, at, located at uh, Frederiksberg for swimming so those we mostly use for uh, degradation measurement. Our world-class facility, the EV lab in uh, Lingby and the SIS lab in uh, Riso campus, and definitely the whole uh, island of Bornholm with its complete uh, power system. I'll just uh, summarize uh, in the next three slides the key results. And uh, basically what you will hear today, it's uh, a little bit further about uh, the methods and the approaches that we have been using in order to gather this kind of uh, results. So the first one will be related to driving behavior, coincidence factor and public charges. So the first and foremost important finding was that uh, when we want to calculate how many people will charge all together on the electrical grid coming back home, it's definitely far from real to assume that everyone will charge home. So we estimate a 40% coincidence factor for a 3.7 kilowatt uh, charging level. And that is just including domestic charges. So we are not uh, uh, assuming any workplace or public charging. So as a matter of fact, this number could get, be even lower. However, we have to remind that this coincidence factor may actually considerably increase in the moment that we tend to synchronize and naturally unsynchronize the human behavior, for instance, by using time of use tariff or other factor like Prius price or CO2 signals. We can uh, estimate that the average distribution grid in Denmark would be able to cope with a 50% EV penetration without any criticality though safety margins are reduced, and particularly on some weak feeders, there could be some problem if EVs are not equally distributed on the phases. On a larger picture, 1 million EVs in Denmark would require approximately 27,000 public charges, with uh, a little bit less than half a billion euro of uh, investment. On a system and local service and battery degradation, we know also, as a learning from the Parker project, that uh, uh, let's say bidding into the frequency market can be extremely remunerative so there is a lot of uh, profit uh, in there but we need to be careful that we need to have extra equipment we need to pay for our losses and uh, fulfill to bid requirements and all these could actually reduce the profit considerably on the other end uh, having unidirectional modulation for frequency control require less hardware uh, but revenue is less because we can only tap from the uh, driven energy throughout the day and uh, revenue by, let's say, speculating uh, or playing on the energy market by taking advantage of the difference of prices throughout the day is not, uh, I would say, very interesting because the revenue is actually rather limited. All in all, uh, uh, taking a little bit back the frequency service, which is the most intense from uh, energy point of view, we can uh, safely say that uh, degradation amounts to only few additional uh, percent compared to the natural degradation. The last uh, key, uh, let's say, macro result is about system stability and need for uh, response. So we can uh, definitely state that EVs are capable of providing fast frequency control and they can contribute to the system stability. However, as long as certain conditions are fulfilled and primarily response time needs to be very small. And this one second target that we identified and we will discuss later in the presentation is also supported by the new version of the Danish grid code for a stationary storage. Considering the control characteristic analyzed, a share of 30% EV in the total regulating reserve is seen as a maximum limit for the investigative system inertia and ramping limit. And uh, the current dynamic of EVs is uh, not really suitable in stabilizing the system if the number of EVs increases largely. However, we can still observe benefit if we activate them with a threshold-based activation. With that, I'll uh, stop for now. That was the initial presentation and uh, I will give uh, the word to Lisa so that uh, she can now move to the second part. Uh,